everybody. Thanks for attending this early session. My name is Minas Dasigenis. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Western Macedonia at the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Here I'm going to present some preliminary results from a research project that our laboratory that I am directing uh, is running currently. These uh, uh, are the six months results from uh, our um, research program. The research program is funded under, under the Research Create Innovate uh, funding and uh, it's on the six months. The consortium of our project consists of the university, some PhD students, some faculty and a company called CERTEC that is going to create the smart bins, is going to manufacture the smart bins. And the goal of this project is to create smart bins that cost under 100 euros. And except the electronics, they carry also a reusable um, fabric so we can help the environment. You all know the research create innovate. So well, let's see about the problem. 55% of the world population lives in urban areas. As I was walking here from the terminal Piraeus uh, station, I saw some garbage bins that were full of garbages. And the problem uh, was and is, as we can understand, that garbage is filled and no one notifies the proper authorities to carry them. And no one does this because um, there are a lot of garbage bins and people usually um, are not uh, concerned so much about uh, um, garbages and they have left this to the um, city uh, stakers. So there is a big problem, is waste management. We all hear from the news that the um, European community gives some fines to the Greek government due to the inefficient garbage collection. And we expect this and other researchers that uh, the problem is going to rise. So we have to find a solution about this. The current waste management trends are not sophisticated enough. And uh, for this reason, they, we can see some garbages that are um, full and garbages flow around them or the other problem is some garbage bins are not filled, but when the truck carries them, it carries incomplete filling of uh, these garbage bins, and uh, the garbage bin, the garbage truck goes to um, an area to dispose of all this, but it's half empty because it has carried a lot of half empty bins. So all these kilometers, especially here in Athens, that uh, I think there are over 50 kilometers in order to dispose the garbage bin, uh, it's an efficient use of the truck itself. So the problem is uh, twofold. From one, from one hand, we want the garbage to be filled and then uh, loaded on the garbage truck. And the second is uh, that uh, if the garbage is not filled, the garbage truck should not carry it. We concerned about uh, solid waste, as you can understand. And uh, in this research project, we want to create the smart bin and also interface it with IoT and create a dynamic schedule. Until now, the municipalities use static schedule. They know that, for example, every morning uh, a truck will pass from a neighborhood and the route is fixed. So this is a static schedule and history has shown that static schedules are inefficient. For example, in my background because I'm a computer architect, the Italian processor, perhaps most of you don't know or don't remember it, it was a processor that uses static scheduling of instructions. But even though Intel has predicted in the 90s that it will be the next revolution on the computer industry, computer architecture, it failed miserably because the dynamic scheduling created by AMD in the superscalar context, and these are the processors that we are now using, superscalar, dynamic scheduling. It does not 
carry static scheduling is much better. So in every problem, because uh, you know principles from the engineering, uh, you can uh, find them common things. So static scheduling is inefficient, dynamic scheduling is uh, something that we should seek for it, we should research for it. It's very difficult, but we think we can find a solution. So uh, we have to create a dynamic schedule. In order to, crea to create a dynamic schedule, we need lots of data. You cannot create a dynamic schedule, a schedule if you don't have data, not real time, but at least to have a, a, a data uh, uh, for an hour, 30 minutes, or uh, a period like this. So we need this data. So in this part, we are going to see how we can find this data, how, how we can transmit this data, and in a future deliverable, we are going to see what we can do about this data. Because as you can know, uh, like understand, we are going to have a lot of data. We are going to have big data. So we have to deal with big data. Of course, other researchers are working on this. We are not the only research team. And the various solutions have been proposed in the literature um, from machine learning prediction, uh, using Wi-Fi or GPRS, which are inefficient techniques for our problem because Wi-Fi needs a lot of power in order to transmit all this data. And of course, it needs an access point, which uh, in most cases you cannot find things like this. Uh, access point in every, uh, near every car that's been in order to uh, transmit the data. GPRS, GPRS also has a cost in order to uh, have a separate SIM on every bin. So these are inefficient solutions. Other people have suggested to use a mesh network, every bin to transfer data to the next bin, to the next bin, and so on, until the data reaches the server. Also this is inefficient because sometimes bins are transferred. Some people move the bins. Some bins, uh, uh, for example, are getting burned from some people and you have to replace them and so this creates issues. So mesh networks are not a solution. And as I said, GPRS also is not a solution. What is a solution? Our solution consists of hardware, software and connectivity and connectivity is LoRa. So I'm going to discuss about all these uh, issues. As I, as I said in the beginning, this is the six month results. So we just have prototypes. Uh, we don't have an actual bin. We just have some breadboards and measurements. And we have uh, demonstrated in our lab that this works. And now we have to find a way to embed all this circuitry in real bins and uh, to make this in a way that it's tamper proof because we also, for, for example, want uh, to be um, for the environment and uh, not to be destroyed by rain, for example. Also, we want to hide them in order not to just grab the box someone and leaves it and takes it. Um, also, uh, we want this to use a battery that will last until six months because uh, usually garbage bins are taken away and washed in order to be cleaned every six months. So we want a system to be energy sufficient for at least six months. What we are using? You are using um, sensors like pressure sensor, temperature sensor, sonar and a LoRa transmitter. Why are you using all the sensor? For example, the pressure sensor is used for detecting when the cap of the bin is open or closed. We don't want to take measurements if nobody uses the, the bin in order to be power efficient. So for this reason, when the cap pushes the sensor trigger, then it means that the cap has closed or open, it depends on the state of the microprocessor, and then it has some actions to follow. I'm going to show you a flow chart of the actions. Temperature uh, sensor, uh, we can take some measurements in order to indicate whether uh, we have an emergency, like a fire on the garbage bin, because it is a problem. Uh, as we have discussed from the 
municipal uh, authorities of Kozani, because there it's the base of our university, some uh, garbage bin uh, get uh, getting fire from people either by accident, because they throw cigarettes, for example, or intentionally. Which, of course, is a problem also, I think, in every city. It's not that in my city only. So we want temperature sensor. We want a sonar, uh, which will calculate the fill percentage. And now we are researching whether we are going to use two sonars or four sonars, for example, because some garbages may fill the one um, partition of the bin and leave the other empty, so we don't want false alarms, we want to minimize the false alarms. And of course, like Billium SX1272 uh, for sending data to the LoRa gateway. Uh, we also uh, have on our university installed the LoRa gateway that is accessible from every part of the city and using the Things network, people, other people, not only us, but people from the city can send data to the network, to the internet. The software implementation is based on the Arduino Uno. Of course, we are planning to design a custom PCB when the whole process finishes. We are going, not going to have and the classic Arduino Uno board with uh, breadboard and uh, uh, DuPont wires. We are going to have a fixed PCB. And uh, for the time being, we are using the Arduino. We uh, have connected the pressure sensor on an interrupt, on a pin that is interrupt capable, pin two, two or three, for example. And uh, when the cap is opened or closed, so the switch uh, is uh, uh, active and sends an interrupt to the prime processor, it wakes up the Arduino in order to handle the state of uh, the system. The software implementation uses uh, this flow and um, as you can see, we don't, when we have a pressure sensor interrupt, the Arduino wakes up and it, it checks the state of the cup. Uh, if um, after five minutes the cup is opened, because sometimes you open the cup uh, and you left the cup open and then you cannot take any measurement because the sonar sensors are placed on the top cover. This creates a problem and an alert message is sent that if we cannot take any measurement, someone has to do something. Otherwise, um, when the cap closed, it takes some measurements using sonar and it, it sends these measurements or in case the fa a failure has emerged, for example, um, someone took out the sonar and you cannot read the sonar, then uh, an alert message is sent. As I said, in our current implementation, we are waiting for five minutes, and after, which is the maximum amount that we think that the cap should be closed, which is uh, m more than enough for our purposes, to take the measurements. The connectivity, the major difference from previous researchers is that we are using the LoRa gateway. The LoRa consists of LoRa end devices, LoRa gateways, and LoRa net server. In the city, uh, at the main building of the university, which is in a hill, we have um, installed a LoRa gateway that connects the LoRa devices to the internet via the Things network. So everyone can use these gateways to send messages to an internet server. And we are doing this. We, have, we are using uh, this gateway you, to send data over the internet. The LoRa has the um, advantage that is very low power and very low, uh, uh, the low distance and, and it's a low distance. So we can achieve um, distances up to many kilometers as I'm going to show you on a map. The actual data ranges of course are very slow. It's uh, 0.3 kilobps to 11 kilobps but for our problem is more than enough. We just send some numbers. We don't send uh, real-time uh, uh, images, for example. We, this bandwidth is enough for our purposes. And for this reason, it's the ideal solution. Of course, we performed some measurements using the LoRa gateway installed around university. 
And um, we took the car, we took this system, the Arduino, the breadboard in a box with a LoRa, and we drove to some parts uh, inside Kozani and in some uh, villages on April, and we managed to achieve up to 23 kilometers uh, from the central point of the gateway. So uh, we were able, using the LoRa gateway located in the center of the city, to take measurements on villages that are up to 23 kilometers, which is very good for us because this means that we can install garbage bins at uh, remote villages and the truck will not go there to pick it up if it's not filled, this uh, garbage bin. And uh, you are going to save a lot in transporting uh, these uh, garbages. As I said, these are preliminary results. Of course, this is a work in progress. And um, uh, for example, we are going to use other techniques like um, computer vision and classification to create um, a mechanism to um, either categorize some basic garbages, for example, paper or glass, or in order to alert in the case that in a recycled bin that accepts paper, other uh, uh, other materials that are not paper are uh, thrown in. So uh, we are going to use also this. And uh, of course, all this data goes to a server that we have to develop also and create visualization, alerting, and uh, so on. So. Um, we are using, as I said, computer vision. This means the energy budget will be much higher. In this case, uh, we are going to use them, and we are using, experiments are being done and have been submitted to uh, the PASET conference at Volos. Uh, there, we are using the Xilinx uh, pink board, which uh, uses uh, an <coughs> dual core and FPGA to accelerate the execution of the neural network. And we have some very good preliminary results also to present at that conference in case that our paper gets accepted about uh, the classification. Of course, the final goal is to embed this into real bins with budget up to 100 euros and uh, deploy them to the city to have some uh, actual real measurements. Thank you very much. Well, we, in the uh, research proposal, we have not written something about routing, but of course, it's a nice uh, topic to make to perform research in order to create an, a complete system. So uh, I, I'm thinking that we are going, after we finish all the deliverables, we're going to continue with the routing, which is a very important problem also. And what about scalability issues? How many sensors or do you need? How many bins can you track with a single sensor? Well, uh, first of all, the bandwidth is, uh, the bandwidth requirements are very low. So if you send every 30 minutes um, some numbers, then it means that uh, on the LoRa we can have, um, we think that we can have up to um, 200 devices, but this have not been tested yet because um, this means we have to implement also collision detection because LoRa does not have collision detection and avoidance. So we will have to perhaps do a, a bidirectional communication, if, which is possible by LoRa, but then we will have to use a, a better transmitter on the beans. Thank you. Uh, first of all, you to your presentation. It's a nice way. I'd like to ask you something about the solar system you are proposing to use the beans. Is actually the best uh, uh, way to, to measure if uh, a bean is full or not? Well, first of all, in the PET system, there is no best solution. There are many solutions. Okay. So. Okay, we could use laser, but laser distance meter costs many th uh, euros. These are uh, one euro per sonar, so it's very cheap. 
and very low power consumption. Someone could use, for example, uh, computer vision, but then means the budget does not perform. So for our requirements, energy efficient and cost, I think that are the best ones. But if you have any suggestion, I will happy hear them.